Hey there, everyone. So one of the easiest and most successful investing strategies is by dollar cost averaging about 10 to 15% of your paycheck or your income into your investments. However, what investments should we choose? So you may have maybe read books, watched YouTube videos, and seen different ways that people choose to invest their funds. However, one of the most popular is by investing in ETFs or index funds. Whenever you hear people talk about these, they sound like the same thing. And this is a problem I had when I first started investing. So in this video, I wanna cover the differences between ETFs and index funds, as well as the similarities. And then we're gonna decide based on your personal situation, which should you choose to help best your investment strategies. Now, before we actually get into the video, I just wanna thank everyone who subscribed to the channel. We've had a couple new subscribers and each and every time I see someone subscribe, it really means a lot. I love that you guys are learning the information that I'm giving out in these videos. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the content and continue to watch and I'll keep pumping out the best content that I possibly can. So if you enjoy this video at all, anytime throughout the video, please go ahead and hit the like button down below. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to see more videos just like this one. Anyways, let's get into it. Now we can't talk about index funds and ETFs without also mentioning mutual funds. All three of these are able to buy into hundreds of companies at the same time with a single purchase. When you're buying a stock, let's say Apple, when you buy that stock, you buy part of Apple and you own part of Apple. However, when you're buying either an index fund, a mutual fund, or an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund, by the way, you're buying into hundreds of companies, depending on which one you choose. This allows you to get a wide variety of diversification for buying into a bunch of companies without having to go in through on your brokerage site, click multiple times buying different companies over and over at their full price, which may cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Instead, by just buying one of these, you can really cut down on the amount that you have to invest that hundred of thousands of dollars. Instead, just with 10, maybe 50, $80 and even fractional shares, you can buy into all of these companies all at once. Now, if what I just said was confusing, I'm gonna go over a little analogy here to make things a little more simple. Imagine you're buying a variety box of chocolates. When you buy this, you get to try out a bunch of different chocolates of different flavors, sizes, and shapes all in the same box. This is similar to our index fund, ETF, or mutual fund. Instead of getting caramel, vanilla, and raspberry, you might be getting Apple, Walgreens, or Tesla. And just like when you're picking out assorted candy for Valentine's Day for your sweetie, there are different brands and sizes to choose from. Your Godiva or Hershey in this example could be brokerages that you use to buy funds, ETFs, stocks, bonds, and any other kind of security. This includes some of the big names such as Vanguard, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, and Schwab, as well as newer app-based brokerages such as M1 Finance, Weeble, and Robinhood. Now, before we go any further, I wanna make the first big distinction between both index funds and mutual funds. Mutual funds, for the most part, they cost more, which is a huge issue. Uh, the reason they cost more is they employ a lot of employees. These employees are trying to do the best research possible that they can on different stocks, different businesses, so that they can have the best results which when they have higher numbers and people see, whoa, this mutual fund's doing really good, more people decide to go with them. So then they earn more money. The way they earn money by you buying into their mutual fund is through an expense ratio. So each of these mutual funds or even index funds and ETFs, they have an expense ratio. This ratio takes out a percentage of the earnings that you get from using that mutual fund and they keep it for themselves help pay for all of the operating expenses, the salaries, the different computers and equipment they have to buy. All of their expenses is covered by this expense ratio. Now this may sound like a good idea, so paying a little bit extra to get something that's better, right? Well, not exactly. When you're paying more for these people to get the best results, that money that they're taking out, that expense ratio, which can range to even a couple percentage points, can really eat out a lot of your gains and make it worse than using something that doesn't have as many people looking over stuff because those extra gains they're getting are getting wiped out completely by the, how much they're costing to pay for. Think about it. If you're paying for the best of the best to pick out stocks for you, they're gonna charge a lot of money because they're the best of the best and they can command a high price. So because of that, even though you're getting maybe better picks, you're really paying for it. 
To keep this in perspective, mutual funds usually charge on average five times more than your average index fund or ETF. So why is it that index funds and ETFs can charge way less? We already talked about how index funds and ETFs are way cheaper than mutual funds because mutual funds have to charge more to take care of all their employees, right? So with an index fund and ETF, do they just have no employees? Well, that's not completely true. They do have employees, however, way less than the normal mutual fund would have. And what they use to make up for that is algorithms. They use an index fund to index or keep track of a certain pattern in the stock market that they want to keep track of. For example, some of the most popular of these track the S&P 500, which the S&P 500 keeps track of the 500 largest companies in the United States. So it's fairly simple to use a computer to keep track of what the top 500 are and to exchange the ones, the companies that fall out of favor and the ones that come into favor to automatically buy and sell those. So they don't need to pay someone to sit at a computer and actively keep track of everything and buy them. It's very simple for a computer to keep track of on its own with just one person or so looking after it. And while these sometimes may not have the best performance compared to your mutual funds, when you take in count all of the expenses that mutual funds charge you, index funds clearly almost always outperform the best mutual funds. The expense ratios for these passively managed funds is way lower. A lot of ones that you can see are around 0.04%. So what that means is you're paying $4 to whatever index fund or ETF you're using for every $10,000 you earn, which is a pretty good deal if you ask me. Whereas the mutual funds, even if you lose money with them, you can end up having to pay a large amount of money in these fees just so they can keep running everything, even though they're not even doing a great job. So now that we've kicked mutual funds to the curb, we're left with index funds and ETFs. And for the most part, they sounded like the exact same thing, right? And that's because they are very similar, but there are a few key differences between the two. And just as a side note, whenever you see an index fund, usually it will have an equivalent ETF to go along with it. So keep that in mind that if there's an index fund you like, there's likely an ETF that will match it that you can choose instead. But wait until you hear these reasons and differences between the two before you decide buying one or the other. The first difference between index funds and mutual funds is that index funds have a larger barrier to entry. What does that mean? That means that index funds can often charge more for you to get into them than ETFs. For example, one of my favorite index funds that I've made a video about, VT Sachs, I love it, it's great, but it charges $3,000 to even get into the fund. That means just to be able to buy the fund into it one time, you have to have at least $3,000 into it. Well, after that, you can put in as much as you want, as low as a dollar at a time, and buy partial shares of the index fund. However, that first investment has to be a minimum of $3,000 or else they think that it's not worth their time to keep managing that money. However, keeping the VT sex example alive, ETFs do not have the same problem. They charge the same amount for each share and it doesn't matter, it, you can still get in. So for example, if you don't have $3,000, that's fine. Go with VTI, which is the equivalent of VT sex for an ETF and you can still get into that kind of fund However, you're going to, have to do it with an ETF. ETFs, you have to buy one share, two share, three share. You can't buy fractional shares with them. However, I see that changing in the future is a lot of these online brokerages such as our M1 Finance and Webull and Robinhood are allowing fractional sharing. I think that's the trend going forward. So if that's a big problem for you, I wouldn't hang up on it because I think that's going to be going away in the near future. Our next big difference between ETFs and index funds is how they're traded, which is both different for the two of them. ETFs trade like your normal stock, where if you see that regular stock graph, you know what I'm talking about, where it's going up and down, up and down, big spikes here and there. But like any other stock, you can buy it at one time, and then at another time during the day, it might be cheaper, then it might be higher and lower. So you kind of know how that works, and that's normal, but index funds are completely different. Index funds decide how much the fund is going to cost to buy a single share of at the end of the day. So after that day, you can buy into it and then you're good and you're set. Or you can buy it at the beginning of the day. It's going to charge you whatever it is at the end of the day. There's no in between. During the hours that the market's open, it doesn't go up or down or change. 
you only figure out that price at the end. So this can be both a pro and a con. For one, you're not staring at the graph of the stock market trying to buy at the best possible time during the day, which you shouldn't be doing anyways. If you're buying and holding long term, it really doesn't matter if you're saving 10 cents here or there when you're buying during the day. The important part is that you're buying and holding long term and by the time you're even thinking about selling that, that little bit of a difference really doesn't mean anything. Now this last difference between ETFs and index funds, I believe is the most important for you guys. And that is that index funds allow for automatic investing, whereas ETFs do not. So with an index fund, you are allowed to actually automatically set up transfers from your bank account all the way into your index funds that you want to purchase each and every month, week, day, however you want to set it up, though I recommend months. Anyways, you can set up this automatic investing so that you don't have to worry about it. So if you're out of town or you're busy and you forget to set up your investing for the month and invest however much 10, 15% of your income that you want to, then you're out of luck, you forgot, and maybe you'll miss out on some days of appreciation within the stock market. So it's just best to set up the automatic investing so you don't forget. Also, it can help you avoid some of what I call paralysis by analysis. You may have heard that before. What that means is you're scared of messing up and not doing the right thing and you're analyzing everything with the stock market and you just worry yourself. For example, this happened to me not too long ago. I was thinking, oh man, the stocks are way too high. There's the pandemic. Uh, this isn't good. I, I shouldn't buy any more into it. This was a few months ago. And you know what? It kept going up. I, I lost out on a good amount of money because I held my money back for a couple of months. I, I didn't want to put it in the market. I thought it was going to go down. And you know what? I was wrong. And I'm willing to admit that. What I should have done is stuck with my automatic investings and not stopped it so that I would keep buying in. Because even though the stocks might seem high right now, Imagine what they're going to be five years from now, 10 years, 20 years from now. You're not even going to think about the difference between a couple dollars or a couple cents, especially. So just set up the automatic investing so you stay in the market. Remember, only about 50% of Americans invest in the stock market and into their retirement. And a lot of them are living paycheck to paycheck. So by simply doing this and cutting this out of your budget so that you don't have to worry about spending a bunch of money on things you don't need like those targeted ads on like instagram and twitter i always see the dumbest things they try getting you to buy they seem cool but then you think at the end of the day why am i wasting money on something like this i don't need it what you will use in your lifetime is that money you set aside for retirement or your future any future expenses that's what's going to be important so make sure you set up automatic investments so you can really realize the compound interest effect that's going to take effect with your money when you're placing them into index or ETFs. So we just went through a lot right there about the similarities and differences between mutual funds, index funds, and ETFs. So like I said in the beginning of the video, which is best for you? Personally, I think if you don't have the $3,000 for the barrier of entry that an index fund takes, I would go into an ETF. This way, you're not missing out on not being involved in the stock market and trying to save up $3,000. However, if you do get your index funds up to $3,000, you can choose to sell them off and buy into the index fund depending on the account you're in. If you're using a Roth IRA, this will be no problem, but it may be a little bit tricky with an IRA or 401k. And you might want to look more into doing that, find some more details and make sure you're doing everything right and looking at all the tax implications of that. If you do have that $3,000 and it's not a problem to invest $3,000, you have three to six months of expenses saved up for emergency expenses, then at that point, I would go with the index fund for all the reasons I said before, especially the automatic investing. This will save you a lot of time and headache of having to go online each month or so and having to log in your information and transfer a certain amount of money over. Instead, it'll automatically do it at whatever scheduled day that you want it to be, and you won't even have to worry about it, and you'll still get all the returns that you would if you're actively paying attention to it. So what are you guys gonna go with? ETFs or index funds? Hopefully not mutual funds, all right? I think we went over that enough. Tell me, which ones you're going into? And also tell me, what are you investing into? You guys know that I like VT Sachs. I already made a video on it. 
I know a lot of people have told me they like uh, FC Rocks from Fidelity, I believe, which is very similar. But let me know, what are you guys investing into? I would love to hear it down in the comments down below so that I can check it out as well as everyone else in the comments. And as always, if you like the video, hit the like button down below. I'd really appreciate it. It really makes making these videos well worth it. Hearing your guys' response and interaction, I, I absolutely love it. Also, subscribe if you're new and you want to see more videos like this. There'll be plenty more each and every week, and I can't wait to continue doing this. Thank you guys for all your support, and I'll see you in the next one.